Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to create a small vase in on shape that we can 3D print. Uh, I'm going to put a test tube in the slot in the middle of the vase. The first thing we need to do is we're going to start to work from uh, an image that I found on the internet. Uh, maybe perhaps your vase might be inspired by a certain piece of part of nature and you would then find an image from the internet and save it in your document. So I'm going to create and I'm going to import a file. The file I've saved as Butterfly Silhouette, you'll click open. I've already done that, so you double click on it, open it, and it will save it uh, in your files in uh, Onshape. So what I'll then do is go to Create and Document, and it'll create a new document. I'm going to call it Vars. And to wait a few moments just for it to load the workspace. And in the workspace, you'll notice that we have three work planes. We have a right plane, a front plane, and a top plane. So I'm going to uh, produce a two-dimensional sketch on one of these here. So I'm going to click sketch and I'm going to select my front plane to sketch in and I'm going to click front. Uh, I often click front so that as this is two-dimensional, I feel that I'm working in a very two-dimensional plane. Now we need to set some constraints here because uh, we don't want this to be too big. So I'm going to just draw a rectangle as a guide and I'm going to stick my guide here. When I left click to drag away from the rectangle, it will let me specify the size of this. So I want this to be around 25 millimeters that way. I'll click return and then it will let me specify the next dimension. This one's going to be 50 millimeters. Uh, so that's a rough guide as to how big I want it. And I'm going to escape my rectangle. The next thing I need to do is then bring in my image. So I'm going to the top here, insert image and there isn't obviously an image in the current document, but if I click other documents and my on shape, my on shape, it will show any images that I've saved in here. So I've got my butterfly silhouette there. And if I double click on that there, I can bring it in. And I'm as I've got that rectangle there, I can use that as a rough guide for the scale of this. So I'm gonna click there. I'm happy with the size of that now. And I'll take that and I can just uh, move that to roughly where I want it. It's going to be about there. I'm, I'm, I'm roughly happy with that. So I'm going to just move it away from the rectangle. The rectangle's done its job now for me. And I'm then going to use the line tool and I'm going to start drawing around uh, the shape of the butterfly. So I'm just going to, I use the line tool. Some of you might want to use the spline tool here, uh, which is okay, but I like the line tool. I just keep my clicks really close together. So I left click to start a line, left click to finish. And every time I finish one line, it will automatically start a new line at the point I've stopped the previous line. So I'm going to work my way around here, keeping my clicks fairly close together uh, and making sure there are no gaps. And I'm going to work my way around. Now, you don't want to sit there and watch me do this. You can see what I'm roughly doing. The closer I keep my clicks together, the more curvy it's going to look. I know the straight lines, but uh, the scale of this is such that when you zoom out, it will look as if there is a curve anyway. So I'll pause it there and uh, come back in a minute or two uh, when I've worked my way around it. So I'm just going to pause. Okay, so welcome back. You see that we've got, I've got to the bottom of this now. What I want to do now is just draw a flat line along the bottom just to sort of show uh, that we've got a good bit of base for the thing to sit down on. So I'm going to click from there and I'm going to escape that line there. So, uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, just bring a line down that we can sort of start to think we're gonna revolve around that area there, because we only, we only want half the butterfly, not all of it. Uh, next thing you want to do is have to think about where the test tube's gonna go. So, actual fact, I'm gonna sit from the bottom. So, uh, go to the line, I'm gonna click line tool, and I'm gonna start a line from there, and I'm gonna go up by uh, let's go three mil. So I'm going to left click, and uh, what you can do now is you can specify how long you want that line to be. So now I've left click. I'm going to just click three and return, and I'm going to go in this direction here, and I want to go along this direction by eight. So I'm going to left click, type eight, and I'm going to go up again, uh, just keeping it absolutely perpendicular. You'll see the lines go dotting to dotted to show it's perpendicular, and click escape line. And the first line there. I don't know why I drew that. So let's get rid of that. And uh, the next thing we need to do is just tidy this up. So I want to do some trimming. So I need to trim, I'm gonna get rid of that bit there, and that bit there, 
and then I just want to get rid of these lines. So that line goes, that line goes, uh, select the line, press delete, select and press delete, select and press delete. So that is the area I want to revolve my vase around. So I'm going to finish my sketch now. So I'm going to click the tick to finish the sketch. Now we're still in that view of that front plane. So if I go to this cube here and go to isometric, that gives us our three dimensional view back. So I can really see what's going on now. Uh, now, hopefully this will have created a solid for us to work with. So I'm going to click the revolve tool now and it's going to ask me to select a face or region to revolve. So I could click that on there, but I'm going to click this area here. So I've selected that there, and I now want it now asking me here to click a revolve axis. So I've selected revolve axis, and if I select this point here, uh, it's now found a point to revolve on. So I'm going to click to select it, and I'm just going to click the tick. So what it's done now is it's revolved that around there. Now I've used a butterfly. Uh, you could use anything you want. Uh, obviously, make sure what you're doing is actually going to adhere to the bed okay, so you've got a good part there to stick to the bed of the printer. And there are no crazy overhangs that won't, won't print. So that, for argument's sake, is that complete. So I'm going to go to right-click, export, and uh, it will bring export options. Because uh, obviously, we need to turn this into a file that you can, you can then 3D print from. Now, mine is set at default at STL. Yours will probably come out at Parasolid, but you need to set it to STL and set your resolution as fine and click OK. Now, when you do this, it'll probably just download the file in your downloads. For me, uh, it's looking for the software to open up in and it's opening up in my 3D, in my uh, slicing software for my 3D printer. So uh, this model is off the platform, put it, I want to put it on the platform. I don't want that available update because I like that version. And there we are, we can see that we've got our print there and that is what will be 3D printed. Uh, so there we go, good luck.